Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. This is Oracle's News Radio. Today is Monday, January 3rd, 2022. Happy New Year to everyone. We have a very special podcast on a trending topic that we want to bring to you. And it is highly psychological, somewhat metaphysical. And we will be talking about egregores and whether or not we should blame people who act under them egregores. Some of you have never heard that term. We're going to be breaking it down. We're going to be using the recent Antonio Brown incident as a way to look at it. And we'll be talking about something that Skip Bayless said recently with Shannon Sharp. And I am Renee Thomas, your host of Oracle's News Radio. Follow us by clicking the follow button on our podcast page and share this podcast with your friends and family via email, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, wherever you like to hang out online. We are a news podcast featuring current events, Oracle and prophetic news, indie music and astrology forecasts that explain the current energy climate within the country and in our world. You can listen to us on Blog Talk Radio, Spreaker, TuneIn, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, just about any app that is used for podcasts. Learn more about our parent company at anointedgroove.com, anointed with one N, groove with two O's dot com. Now, today's podcast will be focused on the meta psychology of egregores, the meta psychology of egregores for a brief take on our ads and for support of this show. If you want to, we want to remind you that you can monitor your glucose levels. If you are a diabetic, just visit the info box of this podcast for details about products that can help. And if you are a diabetic, that is something you definitely need to do. Before we get started, we also want to give a shout out to the top listening countries that listen to this Oracle's news radio podcast. Those countries are the United States, India, the UK, Ghana, Oman, and Sweden. So people are listening all over the world. Those are not the only countries, but we want to thank those top countries for listening. We appreciate all that you do. So follow us today. Now let's get started. Recently, Antonio Brown, who was formerly with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, removed his jersey and equipment and walked off the field in the middle of a game, actually during the third quarter, where his team was losing. This has stirred up a temporary media storm. Now, some might say that it's not so temporary since we've been talking about Antonio Brown for many years now, specifically with regard to certain behaviors and things having to do with what people think about how he acts. Most NFL fans, specifically people who watched the red zone, saw what happened and some feel like it's business as usual. They, you know, they want to hear what people have to say. They want to hear what happened. To be fair, some people say that he said his foot was hurting and then he was told to get back out on the field and when he refused, he was he was let go. And there are many different, we don't really, I don't really know exactly what happened, but that's kind of the latest thing that everybody is saying. However, after hearing Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp talk about this, It sparked something in me because I was like, you know, how can, do I want to talk about Antonio Brown? I mean, it is what it is, but I've also been dealing with another topic of discussion, that of egregores. And I have not heard anyone discuss this situation with regard to egregores. Now, keep in mind, 
Some people think that that Antonio Brown had some mental issues as it relates to possibly some football injury where he was knocked out. Some people say that they have interviews with his stepfather where he started acting out at the age of 12. Some people say that acting out has been documented in his adult years as far as Antonio Brown is concerned, his adult years. So it's not a football injury. It just happens to be related directly to him. However, let's talk about Antonio Brown as it relates to egregores. An egregore is an occult concept representing a thought form or our collective group mind, collective group mind, an autonomous psychic entity made up of and influencing the thoughts of a group of people. Now, that's a lot. So let me repeat that again, because This is really, really important. And I hope that everyone in the world hears this. An egregore is an occult concept representing a thought form or a collective group mind that basically becomes a psychic entity, a psychic sentient being made up of and influencing the thoughts of a group of people. And in French, egregore is spirit of a group. It's a group thought form. It can be created either intentionally or unintentionally and becomes an autonomous individual entity with the power to influence. So basically you take a group of people You put some television shows in front of them. You put movies in front of them. You put commercials in front of them. You put music in front of them with certain lyrics, certain um, books in front of them. You just put a lot of different images in front of them online. What so what have you billboards, things of that nature could come in the news, many other places. And it influences or creates a group mindset about a certain thing. The energy of this group mindset, because all is energy, becomes an autonomous individual or two or three. And that autonomous energy being can influence the mind of a group of people. Now, a group with a common purpose, like a family, a club, a political party, a church, or a country can create an egregore for better or worse, depending upon the type of thought that created it. And some say that these minds or these entities can then take on a mindset of their own. So let's say that you are about to start a country, for example, And the people have been practicing their indigenous religions. They have been practicing their ancestral animism or what have you. And you're trying to bring in a new group mind so that you can change the culture and that you can rule these people. And we understand that people are physical, but they're also mind and culture. So you create a story of this God or what have you. And you tie it into their existing religion to help them to believe it. Then pretty soon, some people are going to start having experiences with this God. And they're going to start attesting to and and testifying to the fact that this God is real. They're going to begin having experiences. They're going to say that this God is talking to them. Why? Because if you if you do what you're supposed to do and you get on the radio and the television and in books and in schools, you can create an an egregore within that group and they will believe that this thing is true and this thing will influence them whether they want it to or not because it com- becomes its own being. It's like you can create a being just like you say God created you. Now there are egregores against certain people in society. Um, let's take on, let's, let's start with 
Okay, let's just, I'm not going to say everything about every group in society, but I will say if you, if I say Jew, you can come up with various characteristics that you think Jews will have. If I say Asian, you come up with various characteristics that you think Asians have. If I say black man, you come up against various characteristics that you automatically see in black men. If I say white American, there are certain characteristics that will automatically come to your mind about who white Americans are. If I say United Kingdom, people of the United Kingdom or people of England, you will come up with specific thoughts about those people. And some of these thoughts are influenced by egregores. Now, they are not the leader. That is one of the egregores against black men, which brings me to the topic of this particular podcast. I've heard a lot of people list everything that Antonio Brown has ever done or most of it. And Antonio Brown has said, it's not me. It's stuff that you guys have created. And people are like, I heard Shannon say, Shannon Sharp, how are we doing it? How are we creating it? You did it. You did it. But Shannon, perhaps Antonio Brown is right. Perhaps an egregore that has been created against the black man did influence Antonio Brown to do what he did. Perhaps it was created by a group mindset. So what egregorian characteristics caused this influence, this entity to influence Antonio Brown? One thing that that was said is that Antonio once Tom Brady stopped throwing to Gronk and once there were some injuries where where Antonio Brown became the premier wide receiver for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and that responsibility for the team was put on his shoulders he 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 crashed and burned under that res- responsibility because the current egregore against black men is that they are not leaders. Now, this is not something that um, was said on that show with Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless. This is a part of the egregore that everybody knows that this egregore exists against black men. Now, are you are am I calling the race card? I mean, some of you may say this is a race card, but it's really not. Egregores are real. And there is an egregore that is out there that says that a black man cannot lead a white man. We saw this when Obama became president and we as African Americans or I particularly was dumbfounded when I heard people say, oh, he will never be my president. Not for the same reasons that they said Trump is not my president, but they were saying that Obama could not be their president simply because he was African American. And some people were so deep in the Egregorian mindset and influence that a black man cannot lead a white man. Why? Because we have never seen it. We don't believe it. It's not on our televisions. It's not in our books. It's not in our movie screens. It's not in our news. It's just not a part of the group mindset. You know, I heard somebody say something about ayahuasca recently, and they said that one thing that the ayahuasca medicine does is it separates your ego, which is part of what the egregore speaks to from you and strips you so basically you are a mind without ego and then whatever happens happens after that well as long as and and it's funny how the word ego is very similar to egregore it it has to do with a group mind and an entity the energetic entity that in Influences and can make a, a black man very nervous when he is about to lead a lot of people. Now, does it affect everybody the same? No, nothing affects everyone the same. But one thing that was said by Skip Bayless is that once Tom Brady 
put the ball in AB's hands and it was like, we are depending on you. That's when AB fell. As long as AB was just being grateful, Antonio Brown, I'm calling him AB, according to Skip, as long as he was just being there and a part of the team and given that other chance and there were other receivers there to take up the slack, he was okay. But as soon as all those balls were thrown to him and it became evident that in order for the Buccaneers to make it, they were depending on Antonio Brown. He said as soon as that happened, they lost him. And I was thinking about that. And I was like, how did Skip know that? Well, Skip knew that for a variety of reasons. He knew that because he had watched it happen before with Antonio. As soon as everybody was depending on him, he would fail them. So I went to a male, a black male in my life, and I said, what what did Skip mean by that? By the fact that as soon as the responsibility was placed solely on on Antonio Brown's shoulders, he would fail. And then this black man told me that it is because some people cannot lead. They cannot be dependent on. They are programmed that they will fail. And so they will self-sabotage before they, uh, so in order to make that a reality, they believe that they cannot be depended on. They believe that they cannot lead the team. They believe that if they're all that you're depending on, it's going to just fall apart. So because they believe it, they cause it to be. So that's why he took off his helmet. That's why he took off his shoulder pads. That's why he took off his shirt. That's why he threw his t-shirt to the crowd. He took off his gloves and he walked out because He followed his belief. He followed his belief. And what we saw on that field yesterday was the egregore was successful. The egregore admitted and convinced Antonio Brown that as as a man, he could not be depended on. And we saw how it affected him. It affected him in a number of ways. Now, he may say, um, well, no, my foot was hurting. Well, you know, at the end of the day, that could just happen in your it could have not been that bad. I mean, how many people play when they're not completely feeling 100 percent? That's that's what sports is all about. People going forth and not tip top condition. It could have been something that was in his mind that, okay, I've got to come up with a way to get this off of me. I am not supposed to lead. The egregore says I'm not supposed to be dependent on. I can't be dependent on. What is another egregorial characteristic of the entity that's out there? Black men are boys and not men. Only white men can lead in America. A lot of white men feel a lot of pressure because of that egregore. A lot of them will hurt themselves or or just buckle under the pressure. But they use bullets instead of just walking out because of the egregore. It's a lot of pressure on them to have everything on them. Some of them embrace it depending on who they are. But they try, even if they fail, a lot of them will just continue to try. And if they if the pressure gets too high, because they're like, we're we're supposed to be the top in America. So the buck stops with us. I mean, when you're dealing with the glass ceiling, quite honestly, you're dealing with the white male. When you when you look at all the Tony Robbins of America and everybody like him, All of these motivational speakers and manifestors and you look out on in the crowd at the resorts and the conferences. Basically, what you're seeing is room full roomfuls of Caucasian people. Why? Because they need to know how to make this happen. They need to know how to work this out. Why? Because a lot of 
Af- African Americans in the recent past before everybody started to wake up, they would be like the man did it. The man is the end and end all be all. It was the man. The man has us like this. The man. And who is the man? The man is primarily white men and then white women. It's it, it was Caucasians that were considered to be the man in America. Now in other countries it's different, but even all over the world, there is a, a mindset that the United Nations has their hand on everything. And so typically it's still white men that's controlling even other countries of brown people. Why? And people may ask themselves, how is it that white men are controlling everything? Well, because they they stumbled upon the 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 technology the spiritual technology of creating egregores and they work with Hollywood to create these egregores. Unfortunately, sometimes egregores go wrong as in this recent situation we're dealing with, with Omicron and all these other divisions of illness. That's a whole different topic. What happens if an egregore gets out of control and the purpose of that egregore was just to reduce the population a little bit, but then it got out of hand and now the people are so into the egregore we can't stop it. All is mind. A different topic for different days, as Professor Mombi would say. So what is the other egregorean characteristic of this egregore that caused Antonio Brown or that in part caused Antonio Brown to take off his shirt and desert his team. Black men are not stable. They leave. They leave their families. They leave their children. They leave their jobs. We sing about it in our R&B songs. We sing about it in our blues songs. We do jokes about it on our comedic stages. We might watch movies about it. Now, one of the things that Bill Cosby made an attempt to do, especially with the Cosby show and many of the other shows that he had, he made a valiant attempt to go against the egregore. In some ways, Oprah is making that attempt as well, but she's doing it more from a spiritual spiritual mumbo jumbo side she's not necessarily taking on the society she knows that if she goes at it from the spiritual side and the super soul sunday kind of side that it's a little bit safer because there's another egregore that spirituality is mumbo jumbo but if you listen to black music it's always talking about heartbreak about your man left. I'm your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday love. And then she's your Saturday, Sunday. Um, what happened to you? What happened to us? The way, uh, you know, it's just a, a lot of heartbreak in R&B songs. If they're not talking about leaving your man leaving or you leaving or you being disrespected, they're talking about just sex. But if you flip the channel and go to some of the country songs and some of the pop songs. Most a lot of those lyrics are talking about love. They're talking about I want to be with you forever. You're my mate forever. And so there's a whole different program that certain races within the country are listening to than what the African American race is listening to. You just put some drums behind it, put a beat and a good bass line. And they'll listen to it. Next thing you know, you're singing. And I first noticed this decades ago when a lot of the songs that I found myself singing, I would change the words to because I was confessing something I did not want to happen in my life. So I would change the words to the song so I could still sing the song and not create the egregore in my life. But black men are not stable. That is part of the egregorial characteristics. They leave. They leave family. They leave their children. They leave their jobs. We sing about it. We joke about it. We watch movies about it. And it's created a group mindset. 
you know, it's so funny because I don't like to go into malls simply because there's an egregore that black people will steal. And I can see a Caucasian woman with straight blonde hair and she can be stuffing her purse. (laughs) But the secret shoppers will come around me and follow me around the store only because of the color of my skin. One of the reasons why I love Amazon is because I can order my stuff on stuff online. I can prepay it and I don't have to deal with the egregore that comes against me when I go into stores or walk in the mall. The other the other way I deal with that egregore as a an African American woman is I I will go to the same stores over and over again so that the people there will know me and they'll know that I'm going to go to the register. They know that I'm going to um, pay for my things. Now, I know that some multicultural counselors say it's all in your mind. That's not really happening. No, sir. It, no, sir. No, ma'am. It is happening because no matter how many white children or white teens are arrested for shoplifting. And no matter how many white women steal, it's still the black women who steal in the mind of this particular egregore. And they steal because they don't have anything. Why? Because they don't have a father. They don't have a man. They are single. And you kind of know they're single because when you see sometimes black women walking around with a bunch of teenage boys, And the boys act like they don't want to be there anyway. Well, we already know if they had a dad, they'd probably be with their dad. But are the black men leaving because they're really just leaving because they want to? Or, Or are they under the influence of the group mind that's traveling through the air as a form of electricity, as a matrix program that's getting into the mind of the African-American male that's telling them you cannot lead. You do not stay. We cannot depend on you. Now, some people can say what you're saying is hogwash. This is the first time we've ever seen anything happen like this. But one of the reasons why I'm bringing this up is because even though this particular display might be unique, we can look at quite a few different scenarios, even within the sports arena, that our African American men fell apart under the pressure. And it's because of the egregores. It's because of the egregores that have been set against them. And once that group mind entity has been set, then it's easier sometimes for people to just fall up under it, especially if they don't know it's not even their own mind. So one of the things we have to do is we have to come against the egregore. We have to let you know that, yes, as an African-American male, you can lead. It can be on your shoulders. You are highly creative. You do know what to do. You are you are humble. You walk in a level of humility. You're not over egotistical. So you're quite capable of leadership. And you actually typically come to the table with new ideas that nobody had ever even thought about. It's time for us as a people, as a country of all different races to let go of our Asian egregores, Jewish egregores, white egregores, black egregores, all egregores. So how did Antonio fall prey to the egregore? He fell prey to it just like everybody else. And it was extremely interesting to me as I close how Skip Bayless brought that out and just kind of sparked that in me. Be careful about egregores in your community be careful about mindsets things that you see over and over again in movies things that that black people are not as 
as worth as much as other people. They're the first people to die in the movie. They're the first people. We know that if there's a group of six, then the and one of them is black, the black person is going to be the first to fall in the horror flick. Why? Because they're they're not as useful. And we know that the last person standing, if you have five teenagers or five young people in a horror flick or a slasher flick, you know good and well that that black one will not be the last one standing. You know that, okay? So it's a part of the egregore that goes into the mind of young black people that says we're not worth it. We're not as valuable as they are. And and I and I hate to say this, but it's another reason why a lot of Caucasian women are getting very feisty and in airports or in airplanes and wanting to fight people because we have created that egregore that they that the supergirl egregore and when when people try to they say well we can't create the egregore for the black woman being powerful because it won't sell we've already set up these egregores we've already set up the the influence so it's already out there now How do you pull an egregore back? Well, one of the ways that we're going to have to pull some of these big time community egregores back is we're going to have to create some egregores that are more powerful. If your lyrics to your R&B songs and your hip hop songs have anything to do with a man leaving his girl for another girl or not caring about any woman other than his mother, don't sing it. Don't write it. If you if somebody wants you to play a part where you're an African American and you're the first person to die, don't play in the part. Just wait, do some waitressing work a little bit longer until you find a part that you can play. As African Americans, don't do these movies where you're in the hood all the time selling drugs. We have to come against the egregore because the biggest drug dealers are are big pharma not African Americans. So let's start to break down these egregores. Let's start to create new egregores so that our men, when the, when the pressure is put on them, they will be able to stand because that old egregore will be canceled by a louder egregore that we ourselves set up. So that completes our show today we want to thank you listeners from whichever platform you are enjoying around the world remember to visit us at anointedgroove.com tell someone you listen to oracles news radio and you learn something important because if you do you can rest assured that you will enjoy the facts and nothing but until next time